All right, welcome to our first example for um, moment distribution method. In this example, um, it's a pretty pretty simple example. Um, really, we're, we're, I'm just going to go over this example just so you can see how the um, <clears throat> moment distribution method works. So here we have uh, a beam supported by a roller at B, and then we have two fixed ends A and C, and there's a point load here, 40 kips, acting be in, in the middle of A and B, so at a, at, a, at a distance of 10 feet from A, and then same thing, but here we have a 60 kip load acting in the middle of um, span B, C, right? So when we do um, moment distribution, what we're really trying to do is we're looking, we're looking at this joint in the middle, and we're trying to get that the moments on the left side and the right side equal but opposite right so that means moments around joint B would be um, equal and opposite or if you added them together you'd equal zero and normally you have a chart that looks something like this and you have all these numbers and arrows on them and so we'll go row by row and explain what each row means the first row is always your distribution factor. And what your distribution factor is, is a factor used at a joint to distribute the initial moment at that joint um, to the opposite ends of that span. And to calculate distribution factors, um, your distribution factor is usually <clears throat> the k value of the span divided by the sum of the k value of the spans. And by this, this equation might be a little confusing. What I'm saying is the distribution factor on the left side of B um, is equal to span, the k value of span AB divided by the, the, the sum of all the spans touching that joint. In this case, it'd be AB and BC, right? Because you have span AB touching joint B and you also have span BC touching joint B so each of the spans K values uh, you'd add together and that's how you would get this denominator okay and remember your K value is just your I over L your your moment of inertia over the length of the span um, and in our case EI is constant Okay, so how would we figure out what the distribution factors are? Well, let's look at joint B, and let's look at the left side. The left side, um, your distribution factor would be the k value of that span, and that is I over L, and L in this case is 20 feet, right? Plus the sum of the k values for the spans that joint is touching. In this case, it's it's I over L 20 plus I over L and the length is 20. So these two values come from spans A, B, and B, C. The K value for um, span A, B is I over 20 and the K value for span B, C is also I over 20, right? Because the lengths are the same. So the sum of those would be I over 20 plus I over 20. And since we said I, EI is constant, we can actually distribute an I out of all this, and that just goes away. So really, we're looking at 1 over 20 plus 1 over 20 over, I mean, plus 1 over 20, right? And if we plug this into our calculator, our distribution factor is 0 0.5. So here, what I'm going to write is 0 0.5. For our distribution factor for the left side of joint B is 0 0.5. Um, same thing for the right side. The only thing we change on the right side is is this, right? The k span, the top k span. So, in in this case, we spans a, b, and b, c are exactly the same in length and moment of inertia. So, um, we'd have k value of b, c, which is one over twenty, over the sum of the k values for the spans joint b is touching that that is uh, the k value for AB 
and BC. And that's 1 over 20 plus 1 over 20, right? Same thing, you get 0 0.5. So on the right side of B, I'm going to write 0 0.5, okay? <clears throat> For fixed ends A and C, uh, there really is no distribution. We don't write a distribution factor because um, for distribution, the, the moment distribution method, we only look at the joints in between those fixed ends, okay? The next line is fixed end moments for all the spans, right? So, and these two, distribution factor and fixed end moments, they're usually the same. These are the same ones you write for all of them. Um, for any moment distribution factor, you always, um, distribution method, you always start with the distribution factor and your fixed end moments. And for this one, I'm gonna oh, let me do it in purple. Um, basically, you look at each span and you write the fixed end moments for that span. So for the fi let's look at section or span A B. The fixed end moments for span A B. Remember, our fixed end moments. You have the 40 here. You have clockwise and you have a clown or clockwise and that's each of those are PL over 8 and one's negative one's positive so PL over 8 or 40 times the length and the length of the span is 20 so 40 times 20 divided by 8 um, should give you negative 100 and I'm gonna write that on the left side of this this box because it corresponds to the moment here at A same thing for B, except this time it's positive, so the fixed end moment should be 100. <clears throat> if you look at span BC, uh, PL over 8, or 60 times 20 over 8, should give you negative 150, because it's on the left side of span BC. And on the right side, it's going to be positive 150, right? PL over 8. Um, 60 times length, which is 20, divided by 8 is 150. So when you start your moment distribution, you always start with a distribution and you have a carryover moment. Every distribution has a carryover moment. So distribution one, <clears throat> what we do is we always look at the joint. So in this mid, in this joint B, we have a moment 100 and negative 150 acting on this joint. Obviously, if you add 100 and negative 150, um, that's not going to be equal to zero. So that means joint B currently is not in equilibrium. So what we're going to do is we're going to sum all the moments acting on joint B. Then um, we're going to multiply by the distribution factor. And then we're going to multiply by negative 1 to switch the sign. Okay. So what you do is you sum the moments you multiply by the distribution factor then you flip the sign and that will be your distribution one so for distribution one for joint B we're gonna get 100 plus negative 150 is negative 50 times the distribution factor on this side which is 0.5 and negative 50 times 0.5 is negative 25 multiply it by negative 1 you get 25 okay same thing on the right side of joint B. Sum all the moments above. In this case, it's 100 minus 150 is negative 150 times negative 1 is 50 times the distribution factor on, on the right side of joint B, which is also 0.5. You also get 25. So these are the same. Your carryover moments, what you do is you carry over half of the moment you found out at joint B. So half of 25 is 12.5 and usually carryover moments we draw an arrow there's no sign change here okay so it's just 25 divided by 2 same thing on this side we're gonna carry over half of the moment from joint B or on the right side of joint B and that's 12.5 and they're both positive right <coughs> now in our case in this case we only actually had to do one distribution cycle why? Because if you sum the moments on the moments on the left side of joint B, we're going to get 100 plus 25 is equal to 125. And if you sum the moments on the right side of joint B, 
you're going to get negative 150 plus 25 is negative 125. So you have 125 on the left side of joint B and you have negative 125 on the right side of joint B. Those are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. And what that means is that the moments at joint B are finely balanced and they're distributed properly. So in our case we only had to do one cycle this distribution one carryover moment one and since joint B is now in equilibrium we don't have to continue doing the moment distribution anymore so the sum of moments are just the moment you sum all the moments in each respective in each column and that's going to be your internal moments um, at those specified joints so for um, joint A we have negative 100 plus 12.5 um, and if you add that two together you get negative 87.5 on this side we have 100 plus 25 you get 125 this here we have negative 150 plus 25 you get negative 125 and on this side 150 plus 12.5 you get 162.5 okay so since the moments at B are equal to zero, um, we're finished with our cycle. This, in this case, we only did one distribution cycle. That's all we needed. It was actually pretty easy. Normally, you would continue doing this distribution carryover moment until your carryover moment becomes less than one. That's kind of the rule of thumb there. In our case, it wasn't, but our joint B was in equilibrium and um, that means joint well joint B is in equilibrium that means the rest of the um, di uh, structure should be in equilibrium so in the next video we're actually going to just finish up this example we'll find the uh, total the reaction at B and A and C okay so see you then